Hi, I'm Dr. Andrew Gabriel from Horizon College and Seminary and andrewkgabriel.com. I'm here today with Dr. Chris Green of Pentecostal Theological Seminary in Cleveland, Tennessee. He's a theology professor here and he's uh, written a book on the theology of the Lord's Supper from a Pentecostal perspective. So I want to ask you, how are uh, Pentecostal scholars like yourself thinking about the Lord's Supper these days in Pentecostal theology? Yeah, I would say most of the recent thinking started with Chris Thomas's presidential address at the Society for Pentecostal Studies, mm -hmm. probably 15, 20 years ago now, in which he made a connection between the fivefold gospel and the sacramental rite, so Lord's Supper, baptism, foot washing, laying on of hands. Ken Archer, after that, picked it up and worked that out in kind of some more detail. Mm -hmm. So there's there's a kind of tradition of talking about the fivefold gospel of Jesus as sanctifier, spirit baptizer, and coming king, and these practices. I'm doing something a little, it's relevant to that and, and resonant with that, but it's something different. I'm, I'm arguing, one, that early Pentecostals in the first decade or so were sacramentally minded in ways that most Pentecostals now are not, that early on there was a lot of vestigial Wesleyanism where there's, there's still remnants of the Anglican tradition showing up in the way they talk about baptism and the Lord's mm -hmm. Supper and ordination. But that, when, you say, when you say sacramentally minded, just briefly, what do you mean yeah. by that? The, 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 the idea that God acts in what we're doing, mm -hmm. that when we're, when we're in the waters of baptism, God is acting. So this, this is the key difference. I think if, if you see non-sacramentally, you see all of water baptism, laying on of hands, taking the Lord's Supper as something we do in response to something God has done. Right. So right. it's fully human action after God has enacted what he's going to do. Mm -hmm. The sacramental imagination means, among other things, that God is acting while we're acting. God mm -hmm. is acting in our action so that what we are doing and what God are doing, what God is doing are, are one mm -hmm. in some way. Right. So God remains the initiator and the, and the consummator. It's God at the beginning and God at the end and God all the way through, but God is including us in it. So this is how I think it matters, for instance, for people as they're taking the Lord's Supper you know, at their church on Sunday morning, right? right. That, that this is not just something we're doing to remind us of Jesus, mm -hmm. but Jesus is present. And a lot of early Pentecostals insisted on that language, that Jesus is present in the Spirit to bless us, to mm -hmm. fill us with life, to heal us, mm -hmm. to call us deeper into the life of God. Mm -hmm. So I think... In our tradition, the emphasis should be not on the absence of God, but on the presence of God, and, mm -hmm. and including at the table. Not in any magical way, not in any ritualized way even, but in the sense that is faith, God, because God is faithful, he's promised to be present here, and we can, mm -hmm. we can trust that. Right. So just briefly, when you say sacramental, how is it different than a Catholic understanding of a sacrament? Because a lot of Pentecostals think, yeah. Catholics think I'm saved by participating in the Lord's Supper. Right, and, and and I think I think Pentecostals there would be lots of distinctions, you know, probably more than we have time to talk about. Right. I think one is, um, and this is a major difference. I think the Catholic tradition would say sacraments are made sacraments by the rites that the priests lead, and and by the rightfulness of the priestly priestly ordination. So the the priest has to be authentic, mm -hmm. and the rite has to be authentic in order mm -hmm. for the ritual itself to be sacramental. And I think Pentecostals would reject any kind of sense that it's it's the right of the right, the rightfulness of the right, or the rightfulness of the priest that makes a sacrament a sacrament. The emphasis will always be on the Spirit's action, that the Spirit, mm -hmm. that God has promised to act in certain ways, and the Spirit does do that for us. So that's a major difference. I think another difference would be in the Catholic tradition, there is there are at least particular ways of talking about what happens to the bread and the wine. Right. Almost theories, and, and Catholic scholars debate this, but many of them, at least at the lay level, Catholics often think of having theories about what happens to the bread and the wine. And I think Pentecostals would reject, would reject that as well. I think they would be less interested in theories about how God is present, mm -hmm. and would just want the focus to be on that God is in fact present, that he is in fact acting Great. as we as we partake. Mm -hmm. And not so much in the bread and the wine itself, as in the sharing of the bread and the wine. So the, the passing of the peace, the, the call to the table, the breaking of the bread. Like in, in the event that's happening, God is happening. God is acting. I think that would be, the, I think that would be a, a distinction between the right. two. Thanks so much, Chris. If you want to 
uh, read and learn more about what Chris is thinking, you can check out his book, Foretasting the Kingdom Toward a Pentecostal Theology of the Lord's Supper. Thank you.